Well, good morning, folks, and um, welcome to the second of this week's um, video reviews. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again. Um, we're back in Asia. We're in the uh, country of Malaysia, and we're on the island of Langkawi. You're looking at Langkawi International Airport, Langkawi in Malaysia, Whiskey Mike, Kilo Lima. This is a payware scenery by Shade Scene, and we're looking at version 1.1 for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. They've made a small update. The download is 244 megs and it installs at 686 megs. Currently available from Sim Market. Here are the prices. It's 14 euros and 39 cents, which equates to roughly $15.42 US or 12 pounds 37 pence UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates from the Euro, and they do include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending on your country of purchase. Um, Langkawi I know quite well, I visited here many years ago. Um, the airport's undergone some massive changes since I was there, when I went there in 1998. The runway certainly couldn't support big heavy jets, but it does now. Um, and it's undergone quite some development. It is a beautiful island and um, quite a lovely quaint little airport which is very very nicely depicted here I must say. So let's look at features and for the moment I've selected um, early morning, it's quarter past seven in the morning just to show you this in a different light. Um, features, so we've got custom terraforming, custom scenery objects for terminal hangars and more, They've got a moderate terminal interior detail, and to be honest, I wouldn't call it moderate. It's actually quite well done. Hand-placed taxi and runway light system. Taxiway center, taxiway's edge, and runway light system is installed as well. You've got full day and night lighting, and handcrafted ground markings and textures. Um, I've had a look at this scenery in some detail, and it's very nice. Okay, it's a small island scenery. Um, but for me, this is the best version currently so far. Um, there is another payware version out there, and I believe there's a freeware too. Um, but Shade Scene have done a lovely job in modelling an airport that I remember quite fondly from many years ago. And uh, this is a nice, lovely, short 35-40 minute flight up from Kuala Lumpur. Um, and there's beautiful scenery out for that. So as ever, let's start with some history. Langkawi International Airport, Whiskey Mike Kilo Lima, is a public use airport owned by Kasana Nasional and operated by Malaysia Airports Holdings Berhad, or MAHB. The airport is located in Padang, Mitsarat, Langkawi, Kedah, Malaysia. In 2015, the airport handled over 2 million passengers and over 30,000 aircraft movements. The airport's capacity was upgraded to accommodate 4 million passengers per year in September 2018. Construction of the modern airport began in 1991 and was finished in December 1993. I last visited this airport in 1998, so not long after that upgrade took place. Langkawi International had been the airfield of the Japanese Army in 1945 and later for the British Army. The state of Kedah has two airports, Langkawi and Sultan Abdul Halim Airport. The airport underwent phase one expansion with the current capacity of 4 million passengers for approximately 89 million ringgits or roughly 19 million US dollars. The expansion included a gross floor area enlargement to 247,570 feet or 23,000 square meters increased parking spaces to over 600 bays and up to eight boarding gates. The runway is now capable of handling Boeing 747 aircraft. There's a private premium lounge in the departure hall. Facilities include food and beverages, a bar, Wi-Fi, shower facilities and a phone and charging station. It is exclusively for departing passengers. Phase 2 of the expansion involves the construction of a proposed aero bridge which is designed to handle the increasing volume of direct international flights. 
more amenities like an arrival hall, commercial terminal, more toilets, prayer rooms and a driveway to the main terminal are to be included in that expansion. Currently some six airlines operate into and out of Langkawi including Air Asia, Malaysia Airlines and Scoot Airlines from Singapore. So that does it for history. Let's have a look at runways now. So runways, we've lowered the lighting to the early morning this time rather than the early evening. Langkawi Airport operates a single runway, 2103, measuring 12,510 feet or 3,813 meters and is constructed from asphalt. The airport lies at an elevation of 23 feet or 7 meters and sits within the GMT UTC plus 8 hours time zone. Now Malaysia does not observe daylight saving time and so is currently just 7 hours ahead of the UK as the UK's move forward one hour for the summer. Now Langkawi operates a bi-directional runway system with runway 03 used for landings and we're looking down the throat of 03 now and runway 21, the other end, used for takeoffs. This is largely due to the mountainous terrain north of the airport and you can see it here. So the runway features high intensity runway lighting, high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators on both sides of the runway and you can see them there. Runway 03, we're looking at it now, which is used for landings. Standard instrument landing system with both Z and Y options and you also have RNP and VOR approach options too. So here you can see they've got the standard approach lighting system. Um, you've even got runway end identifying markers too. Here you have a large displaced threshold and there's the touchdown zone there. So um, when I was here the runway was a lot shorter. Now you've got this massive 12,000 foot runway which can accommodate pretty much anything. Um, and uh, this is pretty much as per the charts. So remember this is runway 03 used for landings only. Let's go have a quick look at the other end which we would use for takeoffs. So here we are looking down the throat of runway 21 and as you can see there's no approach lighting system at all because this runway is used for takeoffs only. Generally um, conditions, wind conditions don't really present a problem here um, such that the uh, bi-directional system works perfectly okay and um, you never need to even think about approach into runway 21. But there you go, you've got the standard high intensity airfield lighting system um, end identifying markers and here you've got the taxiway that goes straight into the runway for takeoffs. There's also a turning area here for long landings but you've got uh, two exits here as well. So that does it for runways. No jetways at this airport so we'll go straight in and have a look at the main tour bring it back to daytime and have a look at well, actually what I think is a really lovely little scenery. So here we begin to have a look at the scenery and just first of all some high level shots to show you the, uh, the, the scenery itself, how it sits in the terrain and I think it looks really really nice. Here you've got the road that goes around to the airport and you've got this internal airside road that goes all the way around. I remember this very well. Somewhere down here, um, when I was visiting in 1998, there's a restaurant bar where you can actually sit and enjoy some food on the open air and watch the aircraft landing and taking off. It was very, very close. And here you've got the local area. And then in the distance, right over here, you've got the town of Kwa, which is probably kind of like the capital of Langkawi. Um, it's quite an extensive town. They also, you have, well, they had duty-free shops there as well. And here you can see various little islands um, located out in the sea nearby. And then looking to the north you've got the various mountains and um, on the north of the island you've got um, some beautiful beaches um, which are great at low tide um, with some amazing little islands dotted out there um, in real life. So it just really is a lovely location. Anyway let's get down and have a close look at the scenery. So starting from the uh, north end here As you can see, there's the airside fence, taxiways, 
when everything's nicely modelled and it fits really beautifully into the terrain, no bumps or problems that I can see. Really does look very, very nice indeed. Slow this down a little bit. As here you can see the quality of the building modelling is, is excellent. There's the fire station. There is the exhibition centre which has been updated and improved since I went there. And here you've got additional hangar space down here too. And there's the fence line, you've got the airside road on this side going around and there's one on the other side of the field here and you have traffic going down there. Incredibly long runway. <laughs> and here you've got the local area, some very very nice buildings and beaches. I mean, it's a wonderful place in real world in the real world. I certainly have to say that. So we're passing back up towards the uh, landside part of the airport here. I mean, you can see the building um, modelling is excellent. Placement of trees. It's very nicely done. All pretty simplified, nothing really um, serious here, but it's just been nicely modelled. And you can see quite a bit of work has been done too. Really does look really nice. So here's my aircraft on stand number two. Um, interesting now that they've got these straight in stands when i was here in 1998 the aircraft was parked at an angle so it would start its engines and taxi right off but here you've got this nose in and the tug there as you can see some really lovely modeling on the building um, i remember much of this but this building has been seriously updated since i was out there and it does look very very nice that's some very nice intricate modeling I had a close up look at the terminal there from the air side. I mean, it does really does look beautiful. Go stand number one here. This, as far as I remember, is the VIP building. Um, it does look very nice. And again, just a look over here, um, and you've got various bits of clutter here. You've got the um, stairs, they're all covered because uh, when you go up to the aircraft, sometimes you get flash rainstorms here and um, this obviously protects the passengers from getting soaked. There's the airfield emergency gates. Various power units down there to the right. More bits and pieces, tugs, other um, vehicles and stairs there. And there's a look across the ramp. I, I mean, I really like this ramp texture as well. This is very close to what it was when I remember it here. You've got various oil stains here. The markings are as they should be. Airside road looks good. So just a quick travel down here, the airside road, so you can have a closer look at what's on offer here. There's the arrivals carousel in there where you go in where the baggage would be placed in and it goes into, um, into airside, or into landside rather. I mean, very, very nice modeling and detail. Quite a lot for what you get. I mean, it's a very, very reasonably priced product. And as you can see, an enormous amount of detail has gone into this. Animated flags. Oh, it's great, it's very nice. And we come up on the fire station here, which is a bit bigger than when I saw it when I was there. Obviously it's been um, improved since, um, since I traveled here. Love the palm trees, beautifully placed. And again, all the signage. So let's get a closer look at the exhibition center here. Again, this is beautifully modeled with the trees and foliage, really represents it well. There you've got animated flags. It's 
very nice indeed. Let's have a look at the control tower while we're here. Not sure if there's any internal modelling, it's not mentioned in the features, but uh, let's have a look. From the outside looks great, it's a nice model there. Right, from the inside is the, the structure is modelled, um, but obviously there's no internal development as such. But uh, unlike some sceneries I've seen where they've not even modelled anything in the tower, you can literally drop out the window. Here you've got the internal structure modelled. And I guess if they were to release an update 1.2, maybe they'd do the internal part of the control tower. But it does look very nice. But as you can see here, there's some really, really nice modelling. I mean, the structures here are really beautifully done and modelled. It's just, just really lovely to look at. So let's have a little look land side here. Land side is very, very nicely defined, as you can see. Again, you've got this really nice modelling that they've done. Okay, so we've got some cars sort of spread a little bit all over the place. This could do with being cleaned up. This is probably my only real criticism of the scenery. Um, you've got this nice building here, nicely modelled. Um, but the cars are all over the place. The cars, the vehicle should really be hand placed. Um, and that can be done. It's been done in many sceneries. So, um, I mean, this is my only real criticism. You've got them going into the building here. But for you pilots airside, this isn't going to matter as such. But it's a pity because it's a beautifully modelled building. Um, the roadways, everything completely done here, but the cars have been just chucked in and unfortunately spoil this part of the scenery. But as you can see, landside is quite extensive and very nicely modelled apart from the vehicles. Vehicles really need to be cleaned up and hand placed. But as you can see, apart from the vehicle problem, this is a really nicely modelled airport. It's just, it's beautiful. Very, very nice. And I'm so pleased because it's a, a place that I have fond memories of. And now I get to be able to fly into what looks like a really nice rendition. So let's pop inside the building and have a look at this internal modelling. Very nice indeed. Oh, the, the, the ceiling's very nicely done. You've got plenty of seating there. And there you are looking out to airside. You've got this lovely window effect there. I mean, the sun gets pretty bright in this part of the world. And so the, um, the windows are slightly shaded. Um, that's nice. Only thing that's missing is some people. Even static people would have been nice. Departure boards are nice. They're very eminently readable, even up close, which is great. Um, it's a pity all the flights are cancelled except one. But it looks lovely inside. Uh, you've got the um, airline desk here to the left. And you've got your shoe shine over there, which is something I remember too. Various wheelchairs, bits and pieces. Internally, looks great. And they're looking out towards our side from the back. You've got this great big space at the back here, which isn't modelled. Once again, land side, as I said, unfortunately spoiled by the splaying of vehicles all over the place. If they clean these vehicles up and hand place them, it would look so much better. And here you can see land side internally is, uh, the structure is there, but nothing else is there. And again, you've got vehicles literally been dropped all over the place. Um, this unfortunately is a bit of a major showstopper really. Um, developer really needs to clean up the vehicle modeling um, get rid of all these vehicles and start hand placing vehicles in the right places makes this scenery look so much better but as you can see the modeling is of a good standard um, the roads 
the foliage, trees, everything. You know, the only thing that spoils it is the placement of the cars, particularly around the terminal. But um, everything else just looks really, really nice. So looking at the baggage carousel hall here on the air side. And there it is seen from the other side. <laughs> it looks great, it's lovely, very nicely modelled. And again, see you've got some really nice little features, lovely little attention to detail here that really brings this scenery really quite high up in my opinion. It's been done very, very well. Now, it's just great, it's very nice. So there you go, a quick tour during the day. Let's lower the light now to dusk and have a look at the lighting. Okay, 20 past 6 in the evening local time. As I said, it's September 2023. And here you can see the lighting on the ramp area, which looks very nice indeed. You've got uh, blue airfield edge lights here too, which are going to help you find your way on and off the runway. There's the runway itself. Lighting's not bad at all. And in the other direction, you've got this lovely shot where the sun sinks below the horizon there. So here's a shot of the main terminal departures at sunset. And it just light, looks really nice. The modeling is good. The light sources are correct. No Sobo globes floating around. So here you've got these subtle lights here, which are really nice. Internally, the effect is perfectly acceptable. Nice reflections here. And the whole thing looks just lovely. Here's the baggage hall that we looked at earlier and seen from the other side. Very nice. There's my aircraft on the ramp and as you can see these overhead lights are putting out quite a lot of light here. They're lighting up this area really quite nicely. Um, nothing quite artificial about it. All looks really quite impressive. And some nice little subtle lighting here and there. Pretty some of the buildings aren't lit unfortunately. The control tower isn't. Um, but it looks quite pleasant. And here as you track along there's the fire station to the right. You can still see some subtle lighting around. Which is lovely. It's fine. Perfectly acceptable. All of these stands are lit so plenty of parking space. And here you've got two open hangars, which you can use as well. So here you've got green centerline lights that lead you off the runway into the exit points. There's two exit points here, one here and one further up there, as you can see. Exit point Charlie. And the runway entry and exit markings as well there, showing you the live runway. And there you've got the windsock and there's the Lankawi sign, which actually I remember was further down to the right, but sort of like in the middle of the runway, but they've obviously moved it here. And there's an overview of the terminal area and the ramp at dusk. So a quick look at landside, um, not too much because unfortunately it's spoiled by the badly placed vehicles. But as you can see, subtle lighting, um, again, lighting produced from the correct source here. Here you've got the lamps, there are no globes floating around, which is a real plus. And again, the same is here. The street lamps are providing the lighting. We'll have a quick run across here. I mean, as you can see, it's very nice, no problem at all. It's just only spoilt. It's only spoilt, unfortunately, by the, um, the cars and the way they're placed. It's a real pity because the terminal has been beautifully modelled, even landside, and you've got signage there. It's just unfortunate that it's all spoiled by the way the cars are placed. This is the only major criticism with this scenery. The scenery itself is wonderful, beautifully modelled. It really is a, a very nice little airport, but the cars really spoil it, for me anyway. Lots of nice buildings there for you to look at during the landside evening too. So that was dusk as you can see the um, sun is rapidly diminishing. 
Let's pop it down to night time now. Okay, 10 p.m. local time, and as you can see, night is upon us. Um, now, one of the things I did notice about Malaysia is when it gets dark, it gets really dark. Um, Malaysia has some very black nights. Um, and again, you can see that reflected here. Looks, looks just as it should do. Ramp area has come up quite nicely, um, and the lighting is really nicely, subtly done. Um, I mean, the whole place looks great, it's very nice. But shade scene, if you're watching this, please, you really need to sort out these vehicles. I'd get rid of all of them from land side of the terminal and then start hand placing some of them in the right places so that the actual land side look of the terminal is not spoiled. It's the only major criticism of this scenery. Here's my aircraft parked on stand two. As you can see, um, the lighting's fine. No real problem at all. It's come up slightly as indeed it should, but uh, the whole ramp area looks beautiful. The modelling is good even in the um, in the darkness. Have a quick run down here, yep, nice subtle lighting. Control tower could do with being lit up as well. And the fire station. Very nice, nice models, nothing serious to write home about, but again it's lit, you've got this big overhead light to my right there that um, is showing the fire station. There you've got the exhibition centre, again subtle lighting, very nice. So there's an overview from high up showing you airside there, all the parking area and the lighting. Here you can see the runway exits all clearly marked with the green exit and the green lighting. Um, it's just, it's great, you're not going to have any problem in the darkness at all. So let's bring the dawn up. So 6.30 in the morning and as you can see the lights have all pretty much gone out and you've got this lovely glow on the airport as the sun comes up to illuminate it. There the sun rises over the mountains to the north of the airport. And there we look out towards the threshold of runway 03 and the beautiful bay. It's very nice. Okay, 7.30 in the morning, it's one hour later, and time to give you my thoughts. Okay, um, the important thing is, do I think it's worth the money? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, under 15 euros, including tax and VAT, remember. Um, and uh, quite a lot of modelling has been done. It's all been beautifully done. The terraforming, the way everything fits here, the ramp area, the runway. Buildings are very nicely modelled. Okay, not a lot of internal modelling, but that's fine reflected in the price and what's been done is perfectly acceptable. Um, the one great standout problem of course is the cars. So again, shade scene, if you're watching this, remove all of the cars from land side of the terminal and then start hand placing some to make that look a little bit better. Anything else I'd like to see improved in this scenery? Okay, um, you don't have to do the internal modelling of the tower and I accept that. But the tower really should be lit at night. There should be some red lights on the top there as well. Um, but it would be nice to see some sort of um, um, parallaxing on the windows and night lighting to bring the tower to life a little bit after dark. And maybe again on some of these other buildings just to... Um, this one for example is a lovely model building but you basically can't see it after dark. But uh, having said that, this is a lovely little scenery at the right price. It's the best version for me of Langkawi Airport that I've seen. Um, it sits in a lovely location for any of you guys that like to fly in Asia. This is a well-known, beautiful airport that now accommodates large jets. And um, yeah, I mean, there's lots I could say about this. The, for me, the price is right. The modelling is excellent. What's been done is perfectly acceptable. Um, the only real major issue to sort out is the cars. If they were to develop this further, then I would like to see some people inside the, uh, the terminal where they modelled all those wonderful seats and check-in desks and signs. And maybe a few engineers outside. And a couple of people, maybe landside, once they've sorted out the cars, waiting for taxis or whatever. Um, the control tower could be lit, certainly after dark, so that it displays really nicely. Don't have to model it inside, but I'd like to see some lighting on it. So after dark, the control tower and this building 
and the exhibition centre and some of the lovely modelling literally gets lost after dark and it's not lit at all. Um, now that, that really won't require very much in terms of an update in my opinion but if they were to do that then you're looking at a really fantastic little airport. Um, and yeah correct those modelling and I would happily value this airport at about 16-17 euros because they've done a lot of work to it they just need to sort out some issues and just maybe develop it slightly further so there they are just my thoughts and opinions um, and guys I bought this um, I wasn't given it for review I bought it and paid for it so uh, and as ever the comments are mine and they've not been influenced by anybody else so there you go folks, this is Langkawi International Airport in Langkawi, the island of Langkawi in Malaysia. It's right off the coast um, of where the border between Malaysia and Thailand. It's a payware scenery by Shade Scene, version 1.1 currently for the PC. Inst uh, downloads at 244 meg and installs at 686 meg. Currently available from Sim Market. Priced at €14.39, which equates to roughly $15.42 or US or £12.37 UK. All prices, US and UK prices, are estimates from the Euro and they do include tax and VAT, which of course may vary slightly depending on which country you're in. This is a lovely scenery, thoroughly recommend it. It's the best one out there and shade scene... Um, Thank you for producing um, one of my favourite little airport places that I have fond memory of. of. Um, and I would urge you, please, please, please clean up those cars. And if you have a mind to do the other suggestions I've um, talked about, then you're going to have a stunning little scenery here. So there you go, folks. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up another review. This time we were in Asia. Very, very nice product. Thoroughly recommended. Thanks for joining me and um, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Happy to um, see your remarks and comments and I'll respond to all of them as I always do. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next review. Take care. Bye bye for now.